Good afternoon. Today we are talking about one of the most unusual instruments that I've ever actually played, and it is this the Con 16E Mellophonium. I was contacted a few weeks ago on my Facebook page from a guy uh, by a guy called Alec Bennington who said to me, Trent, I've got five of these. Would you be interested in reviewing one of them? Naturally, I said yes. And so that's how I've managed to get hold of this uh, assembly of magnificence. If you too have got something that is odd or an unusual and are interested in sending it to me, please get in touch because if it is interesting enough, I'll actually pay for the shipping uh, to get it to me. It's one of the downsides of living in New Zealand. But anyway, let's talk about this particular instrument. It is odd. And let me go through some of the elements of its oddness with you. Um, it is a type of mellophone. So it's very similar in principles to this here, which is a, uh, an Olds and Son marching mellophone. But, of course, it's wrapped in a slightly different way. <clears throat> the tubing uh, starts with this, which is a custom mouthpiece made by con just for this instrument. Uh, we've got the tubing that runs through here, the main tuning slide into the valve section, and then out through here, around, and then out the bell. Now, some of the unusual elements here. We have a counterweight here. This chunk of metal here is designed to make the instrument better balanced. And if you put your finger here and act it as a pivot point, uh, about where the uh, pinky ring is here, it is almost perfectly balanced. And so that's quite uh, a nice touch because this bell here is ridiculous. This bell here is bigger than what you'll find on a standard mellophone because obviously mellophones didn't have bells that were big enough. In fact, it's only a fraction smaller than a bell that you'll get on a French horn. It's ridiculous in size. Um, and so uh, even though it is quite well balanced, it is still quite difficult to hold up, especially if you want to project it straight out in front of you. Um, to make holding it a little bit easier, they've got a little loop here that you might be able to see. This loop is designed for your left, uh, for your right thumb to hold it there so that you've got uh, a point in which you can hold the instrument right-handed. I don't actually like it. It's, it's in a very awkward place, so you've got your three, three fingers articulating the valves and you've sort of got your thumb squirted out off the side somewhat. So trying to actually hold the instrument using this ring is, is not a customary position. It's not something you'll be used to doing. So I actually prefer to have the thumb and first finger in line on the first valve because that feels a whole lot more natural. It also means you're not pushing the valves down at some rather interesting angle. So the rest of the instrument is largely as you see it. Uh, it does come with an additional tuning slide, which is this thing here, which you can put in line on the main uh, tuning slide here. Um, and you can do that to change the key of the instrument so that instead of it being in the key of F, it is in the key of E flat. So it sort of has that dual key purpose. That being said, none of the tuning slides on the valves have any uh, additional lengths to add to them. So you change your main tuning slide and you sort of have to work out where the first, second and third tuning slides need to fit to order to, in order to make that in tune. One of the other things to note is that this bell is three and a half kilometers away from your face. It is the equivalent to having a bell in sixth position as a trombonist. It is two feet away from your face. It's a bizarre thing to try and play. So the mellophonium is one of many attempts to fill in the supposed blank between uh, soprano pitched instruments, like your trumpets and cornets in B-flat, and your trombone, baritone, euphonium pitched instruments, which are an octave lower, again though, in B-flat. And so we've got that range, the alto range, um, filled with a bunch of different experiments, if you like, all in the key of either F or E-flat. We have things like alto trumpets, 
we have things like tenor horns or alto horns depending on where you live in the world we've got things like the solo horn we have things like the mellophone we have things like the mellophonium going back even further we've got things called the ballad horn and the vocal horn you can get alto trombones in that key all of these instruments and many more alongside are attempts to fill that alto range uh, and there's never really been a perfect solution to that because different groups, different bands, different situations require different things out of their alto instruments. So you might have a wind orchestra that wants an instrument that blends with trumpets or you might have a group that wants to blend uh, the altos with the trombones or the baritones, euphos, or with woodwind or with vocalists. And there's never really been a single instrument that works in all different theatres. And I'm afraid this is not the solution. So the Melophonium came about as an attempt to create a new voice, a way to create an alto instrument that had a complete mastery of the range, low, medium and high, had a unique sound and something that would solve the existing problems uh, that you have with other alto pitched instruments like the mellophone and the tenor cores and the um, other instruments that I've uh, mentioned. <clears throat> but unfortunately it didn't really do that. The sound is not dramatically different. Um, the tuning issues are still abominable. Um, but And that's perhaps why the instrument only lasted 20 years or so. The, uh, the Melophonium came into being in uh, around 1957. It lasted for just over 20 years um, and then they just sort of killed the idea off. The big problem with alto pitched instruments is that they have a tendency to have whopping great big bells on the end of them. We've got the Melophone which I introduced as being ridiculous. We've got this which is even more ridiculous. Um, and even though this doesn't exist and this still uh, is manufactured, it doesn't stop me from calling them ridiculous. They do give a mellow sound that does blend well in most theatres, but they have inherent tuning problems. Uh, and the Melophonium is no different. The tuning, if you can get your tuning in the middle register fine, it's going to be all up the wazoo when you try to play high or when you try to play low. If you try to change the key of the instrument from F to E flat, you have to retune all of your valves. If you leave the instrument in the key of F, then all of the valves are naturally a little bit flat. Um, and it's just an instrument that if you try to play it in a group, then you're going to have to continually work very hard to make sure every last note you play has just the right amount of compensation to make it sound in tune. It's a bit of a nightmare. That being said, it's something that I enjoy playing very much. It's an odd instrument. It looks odd. It sounds a little bit interesting. But it... Um, it's actually quite fun to play when you're in isolation with other people if, from other people. If you're playing as I do just in my garage here, then it's a blast. It's, it's, it's great fun. Thanks for watching.